Might be a day late, but let's talk about NXT UK. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Rally Check, here with your NXT UK Part 1 review for uh, November 21st, 2018. Technically, this was yesterday. What can I say, guys? Life gets in the way, but we are starting to crown the first ever NXT UK Women's Champion. So let's start off with the first match, and then Zaya Brookside versus Rhea Ripley now. David and Goliath, to say the least. Zaya Brookside is another one kind of in the uh, in the realm of Dakota Kai as far as being Bailey done properly. She sells really well. Rhea Ripley's a fucking beast. Love her. Um, they go back to their history in the... Uh, in the May Young Classic, where, you know, Brookside tries for the handshake, she gets pie-faced by Ripley. Call her an elbow type and a takedown by Ripley to start, followed by a snapmare forearms by Brookside, a keylock takedown by Ripley, boot by Brookside, buckle bomb by Ripley, right hands by Brookside, and a delayed vertical suplex by Ripley. Now, delayed vertical suplex isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but a delayed vertical suplex by Ripley on somebody as tiny as Zaya Brookside is just like she's, she's just taking a walk, which is fucking great, and her attitude is... The transformation from last May Young Classic to this past May Young Classic um, with Rhea Ripley is absolutely fantastic. She is a great heel without even really trying. She's female Diesel, if Diesel could wrestle, let's just put it that way. Face plant and a drop kick by Ripley, followed by the standing figure four. The standing figure four is another one of those things where it's you, you picture a standard person doing a figure four in Indian death or whatever, but Ripley just with the size advantage just picks her up and carries her around for a while. And she's in this standing figure four for a while. Head scissor by Brookside, a bulldog and a head scissor and double knees by Brookside, but a pump handle bomb gets the win for Ripley. Now on the one hand, you knew Zaya Brookside wasn't winning this match. On the other side, she looked really good in defeat on the third side if that's a thing, Rhea Ripley allowed her to look really good. So all in all, pretty short match, pretty predictable outcome, still really, really good. Want things in the in the future for Zaya Brookside, for sure. Uh, James, Bra James Drake and Zach Gibson being interviewed in the back, basically they ramble for a little bit, but the crux of it is the tag team titles are on our horizon. And then we replay the uh, Wolfgang and the Coffees beating up Mustache Mountain after James Drake and Zach Gibson beat up Mustache Mountain, and then they further showed them being beaten up in the backstage area on a WWE.com exclusive, where they say one down, one to go, because I think they fucked up Tyler Bates' arm. Not entirely sure. Then we get Eddie Dennis, who's huge and impressive, taking on Jack Stars, who's not. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um... He pats Stars on the head, mocking him, and that brings out a little bit of a flurry from Stars. But it's one of those, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant with the news of the past couple of days to make a James Ellsworth reference, because, you know, it's a little problematic at the moment. But remember when he said, you know, any man with two good hands has a fighting chance or whatever. You basically get that kind of flurry from Stars, but there's a takedown and a huge forearm by Dennis, stomps to the midsection, backbreaker by Dennis, back elbow by Stars, uppercuts by Stars, turnbuckle razor's edge by Dennis in the modified brain buster. He gets him in the in the brain buster position, but he does the brain buster to the side, and it's, it's a nice little touch. If you can picture how... Um, Seamus takes somebody to the side for the Celtic Cross. Uh, now imagine somebody taking the Brain Buster from that position. It's all good. Tyson T-Bone and Dave Mastiff, after an argument in the back, are going to fight next week, a.k.a. later on tonight. Mark Andrews versus Wild Boar is interesting. I'm sorry. I love Wild Boar. I love the whole gimmick mask. I love the... the, the what do you call it? The black... Uh, the hell are they called? Contact lenses. And I love the gimmicky jacket with the tusks on it. It's really, really good. Mark Andrews, as I've said before, is just really, really entertaining. He puts out that that vibe of he could be one of the people that you were having a drink with in the crowd while you were watching the show. He's got that kind of excitement. Anyways, collar and elbow type and a takedown by Boar, wrist lock by Boar, and arm drag by Andrews, head scissor by Andrews, face planted on the apron by Boar, which was a nice, neat little spot. Apron sent on by Boar and a sent on to the back once they're back in the ring. Headbutts by Boar, both men trade some chops, high knee by Andrews and an insiguri and an inside out moonsault, which is, you know, Andrews is the high flyer. Andrews is the one that's just going to make everything look fucking gorgeous in that ring. Slingshot 450 in a series of strikes. 
Uh, over under suplex by Boar, corner cannonball lariat by Boar, stun dog millionaire by Andrews, and the shooting star press gets the win for Andrews. I like Wild Boar. He's he's awesomely gimmicky. And why? Why is this a thing? Why? Sorry. Didn't turn my phone off. This is this is what happens. Anyways, um, in the other tournament match for the women's title it, that we got tonight, Tony Storm versus Zila Dawn. How friggin' torn was I in this match? How much did I realistically look at the star power of Tony Storm and think that this was going to be a squash, even though I like Isla Dawn? Uh, wasn't the case, though, because Tony Storm makes their way to the ring. Isla Dawn makes their way to the ring. Uh, running double dropkick by Dawn, a mud hole stomp, a back suplex, some double knees and mud hole stomps again. Snapmare and a double stomp by Dawn, and that is all Isla Dawn before Tony Storm even gets out of the blocks. A couple of chops by Storm and then a boot by Dawn, a high knee, the rings of Saturn, a series of strikes by Storm, a co uh, corner hip attack by Storm, German suplex by Storm, and the Storm Zero gets the win by Storm. I love the opening fl uh, flurry from Ila Dawn. Tony Storm is obviously the favorite in this match. She's running off the momentum of winning the Mae Young Classic. She's bigger. I believe she's more experienced, although I could be wrong, and Ila Dawn does have the size disadvantage, so she went at her like a cat on steroids. It was great. Tony Storm gets the win. Tony Storm, sorry to say at this point, has the more star power. I love the way they juice up Ila Dawn's entrance. It's got that creepiness. They play with the lights a little bit. Pretty sure at some point they'll get a smoke machine involved. Um, She's a great character. Tony Storm is fantastic in the ring. Everything works for this. Tony Storm and Rhea Ripley both go on to the semi quarterfinals, semifinals. Uh, I believe Tony Storm is taking on Ginny and uh, Rhea Ripley is taking on Dakota Kai. Gee, I wonder how those matches are going to go. The main event was weird because you got Legero versus Jordan Devlin, and the commentary once again talks about the fact that Legero is a luchador, even though he's from the UK, and Jordan Devlin is kind of what Finn Balor would be if you questioned if Finn Balor had little children locked up in his basement somewhere. Yeah, I just said that. Collar and elbow tie up, and they trade some armbars. They trade some pin attempts. Boot by Devlin, boot by Legero. Head scissor forearm. Uranagi by Devlin. Moonsault overhead key lock and a neck vice by Devlin. Crossbody by Legero. A trip, a drop kick, and some forearms. Code red by Legero. Running knee by Devlin. Head scissor to the outside by Legero. Insiguri by Devlin. Splash by Legero that's blocked by Devlin's knees. Works the midsection super hard. Sells the midsection super hard. Fantastic. Both men trade some punches. There's a super kick by Legero. Running splash, or sorry, running Spanish fly by Devlin. Double boots. Second rope reverse toss suplex by Legero was not something I was expecting out of the Luchador, but it was really, really cool. I went back and watched it a couple more times just to figure out what I was going to write in my notes, what I was going to call it. But it is, it was a toss suplex from the second rope, uh, reverse style. And it was really, really good. And to his credit, Devlin, even though he's a creepy looking bastard, he does sell really well for the baby faces, which is good. Splash by Legero, the trade some punches on the apron, a face buster on the steps by Devlin, and a knee strike and a side slam get the win for Devlin. Now, this was a cool main event. The night belonged to the ladies. I'm sorry. There's, um, Nothing else to say, but, I mean, Andrews and Wild Boar had a, had a cool little thing there. Legero and Devlin um, were a great main event, but the story right now is the sort of the tag team division that's developing in the background through these backstage segments and whatever, but the true story right now is the... Um, the trailway towards the NXT UK women's title. The tag teams developing in the background are also a thing, but those belts haven't been revealed yet. Now, if you're following social media, if you're following No DQ or WrestleZone or all the, anything like that, you've seen those tag team titles. They're fucking gorgeous. Um, I might go out on a limb and say they're the best looking belts in WWE right now. But they are they are followed up very quickly with obviously Pete Dunne's title and this title that the ladies are fighting for right now. How does the newest brand in the company, when you consider Raw, SmackDown, Mae Young Classic, 205 Live, NXT proper, and then NXT UK, how does the newest brand in the company, with the titles that haven't really been revealed fully yet, have the best looking belts in the company? I don't know, but it's going to be good. We're going to see in the in the next installment here, which is probably going to be done by me either tonight or tomorrow night where we are going to see Tony Storm versus Ginny. We are going to see Rhea Ripley versus um, 
Rhea Ripley versus Dakota Kai. We are going to see Dave Mastiff versus Tyson T-Bone. Uh, that's making for a hell of a show. As I say, I'll get that out to you guys sometime later tonight or tomorrow, depending on how it goes. I still got a Q&A that I got to do. I got some, uh, some last minute news on the Destiny Fearless pay-per-view that's happening this Sunday on Fight TV from Destiny. I'll be there. Check for me in the front row if you're watching. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys.